It's week eight. We are halfway through the fantasy football season. It's time to start making some moves. By now, we know which players are good and which players are bad. But we also know what defenses are good against which position. Now, this is bound to change, but as of week eight, this is the strength of schedule from weeks eight to 14, regular season. If you have any of these records, 0 and 7, 1 and 6, 2 and 5, three and four, four and three, you may want to trade some of your players that have a bad rest of season schedule, weeks eight through 14, for players that have good strength of schedule in that same time frame. Quarterbacks with the best and worst schedule for the rest of the regular season. At Tua Tungabailoa has the worst strength of schedule for the rest of the regular season. You might want to trade him. And who I would aim to get is Lamar Jackson who has the easiest strength of schedule for the rest of the regular season. Tua and Lamar Jackson are back-to-back -back in fantasy football scoring so far this year. You might be able to get that done as a straight-up trade. And if not, you can add a piece to Tua and get Lamar Jackson. Now, unfortunately, he blew up this week, so Lamar Jackson is going to be a little difficult to get. But Tua has had enough blow-up games where you might be able to get a two-for-one to get Lamar Jackson. I would go after that. When you adjust for matchups, Jared Goff has the sixth easiest schedule for the rest of the regular season. Wide receivers that have the easiest strength of schedule for the rest of the regular season. The 49ers have the second easiest schedule. That's Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. The Cowboys have the fourth easiest schedule against the wide receiver. Grab CD Lamb, he's that dude. The Jaguars have the sixth easiest schedule against the wide receiver. Looks like Christian Kirk's gonna get more valuable. The Bengals have the seventh easiest schedule against the wide receiver. You probably can't get Jamar Chase, but you might be able to get T Higgins. Wide receivers with the worst strength of schedule for the rest of the regular season. Marquise Brown. Now I'm not saying you gotta get rid of him because I am excited because Kyler Murray's coming back, but just know that he's gonna have some tough sledding from a matchup standpoint. Be aware of that. And I'm not saying that you should trade these guys, but I just want you to know they got some rough matchups. The third most difficult schedule, the Vikings. That'd be Jordan Addison. The fourth hardest schedule, the Los Angeles Chargers. Keenan Allen. The fifth hardest schedule, the Miami Dolphins. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Now, I'm not saying that you have to trade away any of those guys. What I am saying is they got a tough strength of schedule. Running backs with the easiest schedule for the rest of the regular season. The Vikings. That means Alexander Madison and Cam Akers. Second, we have the Detroit Lions. That's Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. Third, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. That's Isaiah Pacheco. Fourth, we have the Houston Texans. That's Damian Pierce. And fifth, the Los Angeles Chargers. It's Austin Eckler. Sixth, Cleveland Browns. That's Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. Teams with the hardest schedule against running backs. 49ers, that's CMC. Green Bay Packers, that's Aaron Jones. Seattle Seahawks, Kenneth Walker, anybody? Philadelphia Eagles, that's DeAndre Swift. Commanders, it's Brian Robinson. And the Dallas Cowboys, it's Tony Pollard. These teams have the best strength of schedule for the tight end position for the rest of the regular season. The Buffalo Bills, that's Dalton Kincaid. The LA Chargers, that's Gerald Everett. Las Vegas Raiders, that's Michael Mayer. The New York Giants, Darren Waller. New Orleans Saints. That's Taysom Hill. Tight ends with the worst strength of schedule for the rest of the regular season. LA Rams. That's Tyler Higby. Atlanta Falcons. That's Jonu Smith. Oh, wait, I meant Kyle Pitts. Skip a few irrelevant tight ends. Moving on to Jacksonville with the sixth hardest schedule against the tight ends. That's Evan Ingram. Now, none of this is saying that you got to get rid of any of these players or you have to add these players. This is just another tool to use when you're making decisions. There are a lot of variables to go into who to trade for, who to trade away. But this is a nice tool to use to predict future fantasy points. And this stuff changes every week, guys. This is a stamp in time because in three weeks from now, what we think may be a good schedule could flip on its head. So I'll try to do this every so often so that you can get a lay of the land of who has a good schedule, who has a bad schedule. That is actively changing. All of the schedules that I've given are from weeks eight through 14. That's the regular season. Everybody with a losing record may wanna be more cautious on how many players they have that have bad schedules moving forward. You may wanna trade for a few players that have some easier schedules. Just word of advice. 
So now that you have another piece of the puzzle, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Trade advice, add drop, start sit. I'm here for it all. And if you don't know what you should be doing with your roster, I just made a video right here that goes over your record and what you should be doing to get one step closer to taking home one of these. It's all about the championships. Let's get you one of these. Every little bit helps. Straight to schedule, it's just one tool in the giant toolbox that is fantasy football. Don't worry, I got you. This video is gonna be most helpful for fantasy players that either have a losing record or are average because y'all need wins bad, like now. If you have a winning record, I still think this video is helpful, but this next video, that goes over the strength of schedule for the playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? I'm just trying to win a game. Talk about some playoffs. If you want to strengthen the schedule by playoffs, weeks 15 through 17, <laughs> click here. Thank me later. But you can thank me now.